Welcome everyone to another episode of Owning Her Health with Dr. Lisa Holland, the hostess with the mostest. That's me. And I have on this episode 45, the lovely Dr. Susan Clinton, who if you have been listening to my episodes, she was back with me, I think the end of 2016, um, in some of the earlier episodes where we were discussing some women's health. Well, Susan's back here. Dr. Susan's back here uh, discussing her, her current work with this third age concept that I talk about, this, this vitality that really, ladies, we we're in our prime not in our 20s in our 30s but this conversation about our vitality really popping open in our magnificent menopause which is her new program which we'll be discussing so for those of you who are new to my podcast or have not um heard of Susan before uh Susan is dual board certified under the the realm of of physical therapy in orthopedics and well as women's health. On top of that, she's a fellow with manual therapy and she's also, you know, utilizes a lot of the same principles I use in terms of mind and body and holistic well-being. She utilizes principles of yoga and and with her work in bowel and bladder control, uh, researched work. She's gone around the world basically educating a lot of the professionals that you hear and see in the world of women's health. She's also been critical in giving guidelines with her research in not only women's health, but the orthopedic section. As I explained, she was duly uh, certified. And um, so as she's moving into this magnificent menopause conversation that we go over, uh, it, it's really wonderful because, you know, she's, she's done a lot of, uh, her own healing and her own work. You know, I, I like to feature that flipping our own pains and turning that into, you know, turning that fuel that used to eat at us into a fuel for a passion that can actually turn into a profit. So as co-owner of Embody Physiotherapy and Wellness LLC in, uh, Silwicky, Pennsylvania, I hope I pronounced that right. Susan's been able to do that. So we're going to be discussing all of that as well as all of the yummy and the perspective she has in terms of uh, what I was talking to in episode 44. So make sure you listen to episode 44 before you listen to episode 45 so you can really understand the possibilities here, guys, in terms of really reclaiming this third age into making menopause the gateway into something amazing. We'll see you in a few moments without further ado in episode 45 of Owning Her Health right now. Welcome to this episode of Owning Her Health with your host, Dr. Lisa Holland, PT. Join Lisa as she starts the conversation on what it really takes to become a healthy, wealthy, and whole CEO of your life. Listen in to real talk by real lady leaders in all walks of life as they open up on personal health stories, wealth, career, and feminine abundant living. Learn how to grow by owning your body, expanding your mind, and aligning your soul with the purpose only you can pursue in this world. Happiness begins with owning her health right now. Wonderful. Welcome everyone to another wonderful episode of Owning Her Health. I am Dr. Lisa Holland, and I am here today with a beautiful woman who has been a past guest, but so much has happened since um, Susan was here with us last time. I'm excited to bring Dr. Susan Clinton here with a, I think probably she's got a couple more letters after her name since the last time we talked, but um, doing some really exciting stuff. I will say we're recording this when Mercury Retrograde just came in. I am very sensitive to that. We have two powerful, ambitious, revolutionary women talking. So if it sounds a little choppy here and there, I'm going to try to edit out as much as possible, but I'm going to apologize ahead of time because we are going to be talking some real gal power here. And I know already, we already had one time it came off. We're already, we're already messing with, with the universe's wisdom here. So Dr. Susan Clinton uh, teaches internationally now. She's a, a doctor of physical therapy 
amongst many other things. I'll let her kind of introduce all her lineage. She actually has a, a wonderful program, a full GI course. She works with hormonal balance, and she's moving now into some business expansion, which we'll be talking about, moving a little bit more into her coaching, because what we were speaking a few minutes before the uh, podcast on is, you know, we've really got to the the, the healers, uh, are you, you, the public are the healers and really our work mm -hmm. right now, what research is showing is to be the facilitators really needing to move into that psychosocial approach and the bio will follow. We, mm -hmm. as you know, definitely, uh, Susan and I can account to our years of experience in just human development. When you learn human development, you are a sensory being who is reaching out and interacting with this world. And we're, we really shouldn't have forgotten about that. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But thank you, Susan, so much for being here. What did I miss? Who are you in the bigger in the big game right now? And what are you doing? Thanks so much for being here. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be back in your presence again. It's always good to see your smiling face oh, and to you. get some of your energy rubbed off on everybody. Um, <laughs> So I, I've, I'm a physical therapist by trade. Um, I'm an educator and an instructor. I'm a, a, a professional coach as well as a, a health coach. And um, I do uh, actually teach people how to be coaches now through the Integrative Women's Health Institute, as well as integratively see clients along with my partner, Rebecca Meehan, at Embody Physiotherapy and Wellness in Pittsburgh. And on top of all of that, I have decided, as I've been working, I, I loved, I'm have to pull up a, a prop. I'm always better with pictures. Oh, no worries. But, I, but I, uh, I loved what you were saying about, you know, um, women power and the idea that we're facilitators, you know, which is absolutely the truth. We're not fixers, we're facilitators. And the patient narrative, but I just have like, you can kind of see this was last week's people's. Ah. And the, the common denominator in all of those papers is that people have been telling me that they're stuck in many, many different realms. And there's only so much the bio piece that you just talked about is going to, tra you know, going to help them on the transformation that they're actually reaching out and helping. And ask, or they're actually reaching out and, and asking help for. They don't realize that that's what they're asking for, but it is. Deep down in their hearts, they don't want to be in the situation they're in. They want to be rewarded for all of their years and not punished for all of their years. But what I see the narrative out there culturally is that they're not about, we're not valued. We're not um, important anymore. We have nothing left to say. Um, you know, uh, we're not moving as well as we used to just a lot of different things. And that what they're hearing and we're all hearing is, you know, just accept it. You're older. And go well, get on the ship with the, with the elves onto the island where you go to just like pass out the rest of your days. And, you know, and it's, it's just, it's time after time after time, no matter what they're coming to me as a PT for, you know, whether it's pelvic health issues or spine issues or just movement issues, that's the main thing that I hear throughout. And it's one that's very near and dear to my heart because I share this journey with them. Um, you know, into this, the, this voice that we call menopause. And so much is out there for, you know, people who want to be moms and people who need to fix their periods and people who are, you know, struggling in the sandwich generation and people who are, you know, all these other things. But then it's kind of like when you hit a certain age and you run into menopause, most people are looking at you like, oh, well, but you're done now. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Right, because you have all of this wisdom. You, I mean, that's really what we're gathering. That's what our youth is for, gathering those experiences, gathering that wisdom. And, and like you said, you know, we, we're a society that has really valued our body parts. That's really mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. They, found their pleasures and inflicted their pain to make themselves feel better, you know, through their trash in our, in our, in, in, in our backyard. And we willingly and thankfully and graciously and, and martyrdomly accepted it as that, as our role to collect the garbage. And so, you know, we enter in, of course, we're going to feel like crap mm -hmm. by 45 years old on that track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
so anyway, so just, you know, just listening to their stories, you know, really became kind of a, a, a passion of mine was to begin to collect those stories and start writing them down and start looking at the uh, common denominators throughout them. And the common denominators, you know, that I, like I said, that I'm hearing is, 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 very, is being very dismissed, you know, whether it's through their healthcare providers, through their tribe, um, you know, even somewhat amongst themselves with their friends, you know, that the, the chatter has moved to, you know, what we can't do and what bothers us instead of supporting each other into how can we be better in the situation that we're in. So what if we can't sleep eight hours at night? Look what I can get done between the hours of, you know, uh, four and six when I'm awake and, and, I'm, and I'm ready to move and I'm ready to do it. And who cares if I need to take a nap, you know, from one to two in the afternoon? You know, it just it doesn't, who, you know, it's in, instead of saying, oh, I can't sleep anymore like I used to, it's like, can we embrace the new us and really take that forward and say, what are our challenges, not only our challenges, but what are our opportunities that are being presented to us when we can take off some of the shackles of, of the life that we lived before and, and be able to take on some of the new, the new um, opportunities that are sitting in front of us. I love that, Susan. I love your approach there because that's, you know, that conversation of, um, it's not necessarily being positive all the time. It's, it's just taking a different perspective and saying, mm-hmm. what if we focused on what remains and what can keep blossoming um, versus all of the loss. And that's just across the board, you know, like that's just life across the board. How can we have Mm -hmm. a much more uh, fulfilling life, changing our glasses a little bit. And something Mm -hmm. that else that you said is that like that idea of dismissal and whatnot, it's like really about this, where are you going to get your power now? Mm -hmm. Where are you going to place that? So I know that you have a new menopause themed program that you're blossoming, correct? I I do. I do. And sharing the journey with all of these lovely women um, has, you know, emboldened me to kind of say, well, I'm still, I'm not done yet either. Um, And there's so much information to offer and so many good things that we know and it's it's um, a joy to be able to kind of begin to start packaging some of this up in a way that can be accessible to people in a very non-threatening way. So, and the, the program's called Magnificent Menopause. Love that. And the idea behind it is some health coaching on how you can be the best version of yourself now. What is it that you really, really want? You know, what is it that you're really afraid of? And how can you really actually begin to bring those two into a better alignment for yourself? You know, the, the, you talked about women not are worrying about where their power comes from or where it is at this stage of life. And actually, this is where people can really, really, really tap into their inner wisdom. Because as you said, people have so much wisdom coming forward. They just never have really been able to spend time nurturing it and cultivating this inner wisdom and really being able to find beautiful, creative ways to share it. And some of those ways to share it is through remembering and honoring those that have come before. But the other ways to share it is to begin to start exploring the pieces and changes that you want to make at this time. And there's so many creative outlets for people now and so many creative ways to begin to make changes And so many ways that we know, even with evidence-based science, of how people can change. For instance, um, we do know that your brain can continue to improve and change all the way as long as a spark of life is there. That there's never a day that it can't change and improve. And that's important to know because people are resigned to the fact that, you know, I can't remember things so well anymore. I forget this word. I forget that word. Who cares? You can change it. You can move forward. You can do different things with your brain. You can imagine new and different things. You can exercise it and stretch it and have conversations that you never had before. You can do all kinds of wonderful stuff. And the big power behind it is the movement system. And we know that if we can get people moving, particularly their leg muscles, that we have much better impact on the brain health. We know it impacts the cardiovascular health, but we forget about the brain health. And the brain is the big driver there. And that can be just absolutely fantastic. People feel better when they start moving. The question is, is 
How do we get people moving in ways that's comfortable for them? And so the whole idea behind the health coaching is to help people explore what movement means to them. What movement, you know, do they want to do? How do they want to do it? And um, what's going to be fun for them? And not yeah. a chore and not a drudgery. So right. that is something. Talking about the whole, like, look at, you know, the whole Marie Kondo kind of idea. Like, what brings you joy? I mean, it's such a simple concept. It's not like we haven't talked about it. But it, it really is, I think, you know, that, that whole idea of cleaning out your mm-hmm. closets has really, you know, again, mm-hmm. this manifestation of that. But it really is speaking to us of, like, wanting to clean out our closets. And I see that move as we get older and older of that. It gets easier to clean out your closets. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what a joy and, and, and what a beauty that is, like your deep, deep closets. But it's not always pretty. And like a, word, a couple of words I love that you mentioned, you know, you know, beauty and, and, and honor and exploring and change and creativity and that spark of life that you need to give into that, that fire. In yoga, we call that tapas. And it doesn't mm-hmm. mean, you know, we kind of, when we're younger, um, And I don't know if it's because we were younger or just also like in a very, you know, patriarchal, masculinized sort of way. Fire became this sort of like threatening, like, like, like um, explosive, you know, fast and furious, you know, the fast and furious franchise, you know, that kind of thing of everything's got to be done by a certain time. But really, where are we all where are we all rushing to? We're all going to die. You know, like Mm -hmm. that's what what the ending is, you know. So I, I almost feel like you know, what I'm hearing from you is let's have this conversation where all these beautiful words, creativity, change, exploring, all these sort of more feminine vibe things come into the collective so that fire is more like ignition mm-hmm. versus burn out. Right. Or like a spark, mm-hmm. you know, and being able to connect the sparks into something much more meaningful. Uh, you know, it's the time, it's a time of life that, uh, Reflections are possible, but they need to be brought up into the the present everyday collective and not just as a reflection. Our life isn't a reflection. Our life is living in the now. And how do you connect the dots and bring the reflection of of your life up to the present day moment and and actually have a vision for yourself moving forward? Yeah. Uh, Many people feel like that it's done. It's over. I'm too old. I won't see this. I won't see that. It's like, no, this is the time to really begin to explore what it is that you really want to do and how you want to do it and how you want to share it. Right. And And admit kind of what you said before, where it's like, you know, ladies, let's admit you had some shackles. Mm -hmm. You had some shackles bringing up the kids. You had some shackles building up that resume. You Mm -hmm. had some shackles dealing with the physical changes, maybe, you know, of, of, of going from, yeah, a different, a different form of beauty to getting to the more beautiful, to blossoming into who you were, the changes in relationship, relationship with yourself, relationship with others, the changes in where you Mm -hmm. lived, you know, Mm -hmm. now maybe you really can take and look at the roots you have throw out the what you know the old kind of think about when we're gardening right you're like you're going in after that winter and you're and you're clearing out for spring and there's this time you see all this dead stuff and I think you're right you know Susan we get stuck there looking at the dead stuff and instead of saying oh god thank god I see all this stuff and I can clear this out we sort of like start sitting there and fixating and meditating on the dead stuff Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just exactly. like, it's not even the part of like that's nothing to do with the gardening it's like get rid mm-hmm. of that crap and move on to what you're going to harvest exactly and so the you know and part of that becomes the idea that people think that they can't advance forward in intellectual pursuits as well or as financial pursuits and you know what we're finding now is many many women are actually opening businesses and becoming entrepreneurial much more in their later years than they are in their, you know, their childbearing years or their perimenopausal years. And they have the bandwidth for it and they have the patience and they have the understanding that everything doesn't have to happen today, that it doesn't have to happen by tomorrow. The sense of urgency can change quite a bit. And through that, people can really rediscover and, uh, you know, move into areas of their life that they may have wanted to pursue earlier, but weren't able to. And now can be the time to do that. Right. The other piece of it is that most people will also think that um, 
you know, the changes in their, in their hormone system is, and, and in their internal wrinkles, you know, which are all the, which are all the normal changes of aging, just, you know, just internal wrinkles, you know, means that they're going to be slow and, and burdenful and uh, painful. And it couldn't be further from the truth. And sometimes just the simplest of movement programs can dramatically change people's outlooks and uh, the psychology of how they can even look at their life and, you know, get the serotonin back up into the brain and, you know, we can't eat like we were when we were 20, but when I was 40, I couldn't eat like I was when I was 20. I mean, you know, this is like... And you don't have to. Again, your baby doesn't eat like your teenager. Exactly. I mean, you know, like we, again, focusing on what we lost instead of saying, oh, good. Now I have the opportunity to eat like this. Right. You know, I, you know, I have the opportunity to to change um, my relationship around uh, my culture with food and, you know, bring new pieces into the tribe, you know, when we gather for dinners and, and celebrations and things like that and being able to uh, be more present in the moment with it rather than mourning the fact that, you know, 60 years ago I used to eat a certain way. Right. Which you is know, what the like- grandmothers and the and the elders of of communities that were kind of you know together for longer periods of time that's what happened that's mm-hmm. exactly who they were they were the ones that were there to talk to and reminisce but not about the history like mm-hmm. not about the history books because again if if that worked, if if studying history worked, why the hell do we keep doing the same exact right. thing? Right. Why do we keep because repeating? We're not it? actually wisdom seekers anymore. Mm-hmm. We're data point collectors. And 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 it really was the women who were the storytellers, mm-hmm. the ones that taught through legacy, through their body, through their cycles. So I really love what you're kind of like having that conversation and and, and embodying in yourself, Susan, because you're mm-hmm. there. You had to walk the journey. You walked that heroine's path to get to where you are. You saw the GI issues. I mean, again, all manifested. It's just, you know, I, I always say we're never broken. Like you said, I love what you said. We're not fixers, you know, we're facilitators. It's so true. And our gut is always telling us. I mean, I think more women get these autoimmune and these gut issues because we just weren't listening to our gut. And that's all our beautiful body can do is scream and yell at us until maybe we find a Susan or a Lisa or a Janie or a Jessica or somebody who will maybe possibly help us have a different point of view a mirror. And that's really kind of what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I think Jenny Burrell said it the best that menopause is like a giant spotlight and, you know, you, you can choose to step into the spotlight, but it's also going to help you identify where you need to change and where change is possible. And because it is a spotlight, it's, you know, things that you could get away with before, are different now. And it's not a matter of getting away with it. It's a matter of reframing it and saying, how do I want to feel? Do I want to feel like I feel right now? Or do I want to feel better? Do I want to feel more energetic? Do I want to feel more at peace? Do I want to feel like I've got, you know, the mental capacity to, can, you know, to, can, to really create this business or to create this piece of art or to create this uh, change in my family tribe or whatever it is, like whatever, whatever the, the impetus is, how do you feel now and know that it can be different? Yeah. And it's not like, this is not it. This is not it. And I think and some I of the wisest I people feel in like the world. It's a responsibility, don't you? Like societal responsibility, because, you know, one of the things we haven't really mentioned is, you know, our, our men, the men, the sons, the, the people, you know, now we're kind mm-hmm. of in a world where it's non-binary, really. And that right. goes to show you that ability to sort of blend all of this now into whatever package. But we definitely have people in the polls that need to see this new form. Needs, mm-hmm. to, you know, I almost feel like, you know, this is this is a lesson that was taken out of the vernacular 
for a long while of, you know, when we did take out those, you know, wise grandmothers around and, and, and mm-hmm. did, did stop kind of really crediting the matriarchy balance with the patriarchy, we stopped also showing the men what that looks like. What does beauty look like in this, in this cycle? What does that strength and, uh, you know, that reframe you're talking about, Mm -hmm. like, are you finding that? Are you finding as you're doing this or moving into this, you know, for your, in your own relationships or just with your colleagues? Definitely, definitely. And it certainly changes the way that I teach. It changes the way that I travel. I still travel. I just travel differently now. I pay closer attention to what hotel I'm going to stay in and does it have a place for me to cook? That's important to me now. Does it have a pool so that I can get into the water and move and do the movement choice that I want to do when I'm putting some energy into other things? It's not like I can't do it. It's like I need to do it differently in a way that makes me feel good rather than a way that exhausts me. And I think that's the biggest part is that oftentimes people just feel like they, ha- they have one frame of reference to go off of and it's the way they've always done. You were talking about this earlier about get it done, get it here, do this, do this, do this. And they can try to continue that into this, into this, uh, into this age. And in this age, it's more about cha- doing the things you want to do and even adding new things that you want to do but that requires you to think and move and perform differently. Not, you know, not like I have to slow down. I just have to do it different. I have to think about changing this pattern a bit so that I feel good at the end of this vacation. So I feel good at the end of this travel time to teach. So I feel good at the end of the week so that I can take on a a student for mentoring and not feel like now I need to have two days to like go sleep. Um, but I do need to build in my rest time and my period time. And I think uh, Jessica Drummond always says it best at the times when you're really working hard is a time more for radical self-care rather than putting it off. And I, this, this age can show and spotlight those areas where that really needs to change. And, um, and, and there's so many different ways to do it. But we, you know, we have so much evidence now to show that um, being together with people uh, you know, not isolating, uh, movement, um, you know, brain games, um, conversation, learning new things, reading, trying your hand at stuff, dancing, all bring things together that enriches people's lives in such a wonderful way that they're not feeling like they're going downhill. They feel like they're constantly going uphill again, you know, which is the way I think everybody wants to is like, they want to take that moment and pause, but they also want to know that I can say yes to that trip. I just have to do it differently, (laughs) but I can say yes to that. I may have to build another day on, you know, and not rush out the, you know, so when I'm teaching so rigid, Right. When I'm teaching now, I, I start looking for those, you know, it's like, okay, I'm probably going to need to leave on Monday instead of Sunday night because I really need that time to come back, recollect, maybe swim, get a really nice night's sleep, and then I'm much ready and prepared for travel the next day. And I'm not so sure we don't need this earlier. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You know what I mean? Like the one of the reasons why we're so starved, I feel, is because we have not thought that way you know mm-hmm. we were it's, it's this constant desire to go backwards like benjamin buttons you know mm-hmm. it, it's like i would never want to end up an infant mentality in a totally dependent every you know being totally right. dependent on everyone else because and that's really where you're driving yourself Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of your nourishment, if you don't take care of your mindset, if you don't take care of your physicality, your emotionality, your, you know, your energetics, that's really what I'm hearing you say is it's, it's really, it's a change in the energetic exchange. It's not really, uh, you know, when you, I mean, I don't know about you, Susan, but like, I just, do you find, I, I find like, I'm just like, there's just stuff. I, I am thank, like, I'm grateful. I've gotten to the point where I don't find stupid stuff important anymore. Like I'm, exactly. I'm grateful to let it go. I, I, I totally agree. <laughs> and the, gra- the gratitude is like uh, immense in my life for that. And I'm very grateful every day that I can let go of some of those things. But you know, the, the interesting thing is that a lot of people really feel like 
what's the point? And I, and that I realize everybody's on their own journey, but I also realize that if people are shown other pathways, they might choose a different journey. Mm-hmm. And that's what this is about is that if you want a different journey, we can take you on a different journey. We can pair up with you and help you see and do some things that might begin to change things enough for you to really decide that that journey is worth it for you. Mm-hmm. And rather than, like you said, sit in the weeds and look at the dead stuff. <laughs> right. And I mean, just so mourn, over, mourn over the yeah. stuff that's no longer there. Mm-hmm. Where can this journey take you now? And because, you know, again, as long as you're, as long as you're living, you should be living Right. What is marking, life? That you know, mark, life. Not marking time. And I think people are really afraid of that. They're, they're deep down in their heart of hearts. They're afraid of, you know, being a burden or becoming, you know, this way or that way. And so helping people begin to understand that some of the simplest and best choices they can make can have profound impact on their ability to feel confident to say yes. Yeah. So Susan, what are a couple of the things that we might expect from your program or programs in general, just, you know, wisdom nuggets, you know, Mm -hmm. one or two or three real big wisdom nuggets that we could sort of go away with that you found through research and also experience bringing it into Mm -hmm. either your own personal life or clinical work. Right. So the, the, one of the biggest nuggets is movement and movement does not have to be movement as defined by society. Movement can be as simple as turning on the music in your house and dancing, you know, to the music. Uh, movement can be as simple as taking a walk with a friend um, and movement can be as stressful as you want it to be. Movement can be, getting to the gym and starting to challenge yourself with a few heavy things to start pushing around and, and knowing that it's going to affect your bone health and your joint health in a very positive way. It's very interesting that we all know that the only way to get our cardiovascular system better is to stress it. That the only way to get our respiratory system better is to stress it a bit, but we forget that the best way to get our movement system better is to stress it. And, you know, so people hear the word stress, start to feel, you know, I can't do a spending class. Nobody asked you to do a spending class. What do you want to do? I'd really like to be able to, you know, um, do this. I want to, I want to go somewhere and I want to do, you know, a gentle movement flow class where I feel free and easy. Perfect. That counts. You know, movement is movement and finding those movement things that really work for you and finding the time of day where they actually energize you, I think is the biggest thing. So at the, if you are working in this age of your life and you're, or you're running a business or you're doing a lot of things or you're um, helping out with some grandchildren or whatever you're doing, then probably the cardiovascular stressing exercises may not be appropriate at the time when you're the most exhausted. And instead, maybe you need to look for changing the time of day that you're exercising, you know, and, and be, beginning to understand that relationship between um, there's, a, there's a time for a nice, gentle, beautiful movement, relaxation type of movement. And there's a time for a little bit more of, you know, get your hair going, you know, and the sweat going just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, and, it, and, it, and it will change and it'll change according to kind of where you are and what's going on. Because your life isn't going to be looking at a schedule that's the same day in and day out. Actually, the variety is the spice of life. So the more you can vary your schedule and vary these things are going to help in resilience and nimbleness. Yeah. So being able to, being able to change lanes. Yeah. And tangents and mm-hmm. again, that flow a little bit and not be so stressed by that flow. And like you said, mm-hmm. stress is not the problem processing of stress might be a problem but the stress itself is actually what builds the reason why we need to be stronger across the board emotionally I mean we'd have the whole conversation Mm -hmm. with kids and resiliency you know you can't give everybody a badge every day for just waking up in the morning and expect them to be able to to deal with the day that's not going so well by 9 a.m. So I completely hear you. So what's another wisdom? So another another nugget is relationship with stress, That now that you bring that up. And that's learning that the research is very, very starting to become very clear on the idea that stress and our relationship with stress is probably what is the problem for us. 
because stress is an inevitable way of life. It's just inevitable in life. And like, like pain, you're not going to have a life without pain. Right. You know, it's, it's a normal part of life. But if you view the stress as something negative and that it's going to kill you, then it probably will. But if you could also view, you know, because they've done studies on this and the people who have the same amount of stress are more, but just stress, just what it is, you know, and they're, they, it doesn't affect them. They don't, I mean, they don't allow it to, they don't have a negative view of it. They have a positive view of it actually turn out doing much better. And I think, you know, so in this, it's like being able to uh, change the relationship with some of the stressors in their life and figuring out a new ways to reframe around it so that it doesn't become a burden for them, but it becomes a blessing. So I'm going to, ask you specifically on this this third little nugget tell me what you know because i think this is something that's on a lot of people's minds with those changing hormones and things like that it's it really is sex and vitality i I feel like sex is part of your vitality what's a little nugget we can to kind of get our sexy back if we've lost it or keep healthy in that realm because i think that's one of those you know again it was like voodoo, hoodoo, you know, quiet, taboo, you know, any of these, these things for, uh, it still is like, it's still Mm -hmm. so taboo in these talks. It's like just pleasure and joy is just, just passing over the Mm -hmm. the line of conversation. Right. Is Is there a tidbit you've learned from, from things that we can Kind of, sure. There's, that's such a bucket for all the rest. Mm-hmm. There is. There's. There's some uh, amazing uh, stuff out there about all of this. Um, probably the best nugget is um, be a better partner. Mm. You know that instead of looking for what others should be doing for you, maybe you need to reframe it and think: How can I be different and better for others? Yeah. Whichever way you want to go. We do know one thing that it, if you want to think about the rising, um, <laughs> which is kind of a funny statistic, but the rising uh, STDs yeah. is not in the population that you think it is. I know it's in it's in the it's in the um, the senior homes. Yep. So <laughs> it's, it's it's with older people because they're free of you know the fear of pregnancy they're free of the shackles of who cares my husband's dead i can do whatever i want to do i it did you know it's not you know i don't mean it to paint it in a bad picture but the idea is if you look at that that there is joy it's just who's limiting the joy right is it, is it yourself and is it yourself predisposed thoughts and cultures about it is it because you've been with the same person for a long time and you've had some past history and now you've just kind of learn to coexist, you can get that oomph back by changing and being a, a better partner, letting go of past grudges and past differences and things that are inevitable in any relationship in life and beginning to change, but also thinking about doing it a little differently. Yeah. You know? Learning from but those lessons. What, what's wrong with a little lubrication? Right. right. <laughs> what's wrong with some intimacy, intimacy and touch and, and, you know, moving back to that and looking beyond the skin and back into the eyes and the soul and the idea of the other person, you know, with you and the journey that they're on and, you know, being able to carry that forward in a new way, in a new and different way, um, you know, being able to let go of the, like I said, the resentments, but even the language around it. Mm-hmm. We're too old to have sex. We're too old to do this. But can't we have it differently? You know, if your if your partner cannot have an erection, you can still have sex. Right, and, and not, both have very enjoyable not sex. Not yeah. just, again, that part. You know, again, looking at that. You just don't have to have intercourse. Five rounds, but like looking at mm-hmm. that whole big intersecting of all those. You know, mm-hmm. um, to- almost like geometrically. Or geom- yeah, geometrically, like kind of like Tauruses, like not even like circles, like a Venn diagram, but all this like convoluted sort of, you know, interaction mm-hmm. at this point, especially if you've been with somebody for years, but you as a person, because you mentioned, you know, become a better partner. But like what I'm hearing is like, become a better person through your process mm-hmm. and take that into your partnerships. Mm-hmm. Again, not what can you give me, because that's really not the journey we're on like right. what can I get out of it it's a very narcissistic immature emotional intelligence I mean you're supposed mm-hmm. to emotionally get intelligence as much as 
you know, mental intelligence or mental processing speeds or data collecting or whatnot. Um, you know, so I, I, I love, I love that idea of, again, because it gets to a point, I feel like when you get to those older years and, and when it's, it's hard to start dating, but it's really great to start attracting, you know, I'm always talking about that, you know, again, mm -hmm. that attraction marketing, like it, it, bringing that into our life, let the, let the bees come to the honey and be mm -hmm. out there in life, mm -hmm. you know? I, yep. I, I really like that. So mm -hmm. Susan, where can we find you nowadays to have these conversations? If we're interested in, in, in talking to you and some of your programs, where's the best place to find everything? The best place to find everything is still on my website, um, www.embody-pt.com or to email me simply at susan at embody-pt.com. Best way to get in touch with me is by email for sure. Okay. And, um, you know, so my program will be up this year. I'm in the process of gathering the resources and putting the packages together and doing the things that people can download for the informational pieces and parts of, of awesome. the various programs. And um, as with anybody, website's always in flux. So if you don't find what you're looking for there, drop me an email. Yeah. It may have been removed. Yeah, it it be we'll be back. So yes, yeah. so things change all the time. Yeah. And, uh, and that's where you'll find me. All right. Awesome. And in terms of um, some of your, uh, is that also where if, if there's some professionals listening or some people that are, you know, in health and wellness or really do want to start training themselves? Because I think that's one of the things we need to do too, right? Start, start finding ways to, we have the professionals, we have the public and then, you know, avenues for our journey to become like peer counselors for each other. Mm -hmm. If we're sort of in that bubble, improving ourselves through this process, mm -hmm. where can we get in touch with you? Is that also that website or anywhere? It's also the website and you can, um, when it says make an appointment, you can look to that and, and schedule a mentoring session or Wonderful. you can email me and ask me about, you know, mentoring or, you know, joining up for some of those conversations for sure there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So Susan, I always try to ask a little like a before or after we kind of ended up working more towards that movement from mothering to matriarchal wisdom holder role. So if, if we were to talk to you in 10 years, what do you, what would you hope we would kind of, you know, what would be the words coming out of that Susan 10 years from now, her wisdom coming out? What would you, what, you, what would you hope that she's able to share with, with the young um, women. That I'm able to share how much more vital and fantastic their life will get with every year that's in front of them. And that there are so many more possibilities than they ever imagined or dreamed of, whether mm -hmm. it's being more active in their grandchildren's lives or more active in their own life as far as business, or maybe they've taken on a second career, that they're moving Everybody is moving some way or another, and everybody is embracing some really nice holistic practices of turning off the dirty energy, uh, eating well and healthy to feel really good at the end of the day or into the next day, that they're embracing the sleep that they do get, and they're enjoying the time when they're awake, whether mm -hmm. it's in the middle of the night or <laughs> in the right. middle of the day right. and that they're, that they're these rules as much. able to honor the <laughs> rhythms of their life a lot better love that. That is a I hope wonderful I'm doing that as well perfect honor the rhythms of your life I love that wisdom nugget um make sure and go to the show notes over on the uh the show page because we'll have all the links so it'll be super easy to get in touch with mm -hmm. Susan um and I just, I really, really thank you, Susan, here for having this conversation because it is, it's this, it's this third age, like they call it over in, in Europe, this idea that it is, it is not the, you know, because it's, it's kind of looking like at, at the end of like a winter, like the end of the year. It, what it is, is this, re, you know, this really buckle down, what are we going to keep? What are we going to take? Um, and for that new spring. And That's I, right. It's the I new spring, that. not the, not the winter. Right. The new spring. So I love that, Susan. Thank you so much for being here, Susan. And, um, 
another wonderful episode, ending another wonderful episode of Owning Her Health. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next Mm -hmm. time. Thank you for listening into this episode of Owning Her Health with Dr. Lisa Holland, PT. To learn more about her personal and professional development service, visit her online at drlisahollandpt.com. 